You don't have to be a space freak to know the story of Apollo 13. Chances are you saw Ron Howard's 1995 film, which told the story to the world. You know that astronaut Jim Lovell and his crew had to abort their trip to the moon when an oxygen tank exploded 200,000 miles from Earth. You may remember the men had to use their lunar lander's rocket engine to get back onto the proper course for Earth. And you know what would have happened if the astronauts had failed. They would have missed the Earth and died a lonely death in space when their oxygen ran out. Even more chilling, their bodies would never have returned because Apollo 13 would have circled in space forever. Or so I always thought. It's the story in just about every published account of Apollo 13, including my own book, A Man on the Moon. And it's what I still believed in early 2000 when I asked analytical graphics to create some simulations of key moments from the flight. A few weeks later, I got a call from Bob Hall, one of the technical experts there, telling me that something strange had come up. Hall and his team had been working on a simulation showing what would have happened if the astronauts had failed to get back on course. In the simulation, Apollo 13 misses the Earth as expected. But instead of missing it by 40,000 miles, the number that's in all the books, the spacecraft comes much closer, only about 2,500 miles. Then it follows a new orbit that stretches 350,000 miles out into space before it falls back toward Earth again. At first, it looks as if the old story is still correct. But then comes the really big surprise. In the simulation, the spacecraft passes about 30,000 miles from the moon, close enough for the moon's gravity to change its orbit. Now, when Apollo 13 heads back toward Earth, it's on a collision course. On May 20th, 1970, five weeks after the explosion, Apollo 13 plunges into the atmosphere and burns up. I was just as startled to hear this as Bob Hall was. We both wanted some kind of confirmation. So I put him in touch with Chuck Dietrich, a flight controller who helped get the Apollo 13 astronauts home. Dietrich went digging into his own files from 30 years earlier, and he found data that confirmed the simulation was right. Of course, Jim Lovell and his crew did get back home safely. And Apollo 13 is a reminder to all of us what people can accomplish when they work together and refuse to fail. I still think it's a story that will be as exciting a hundred years from now as it is today. And now it's even more interesting than it was before. I'm Andrew Chaikin, author of A Man on the Moon.